My name is John Levan. I have 25 plus years experience in data centres. I used to own a company that um, designed and built data centres and I sold that a few years ago. Today I do consultancy and training. Why should they come to the training? Well, I think it's vocational training and after they've done the training, the objective is that they go back to work and they do their jobs better. They'll enjoy themselves, hopefully, on the training course. They'll network with all the other people on the training course and have fun. But fundamentally, it's about vocational training so they can upskill to do their jobs better when they go back to work. The type of people that come on the courses, a wide range. I primarily teach the three day data centre design awareness course and it's a course that's holistic, it covers every single subsystem in a data centre, includes all the underground services that come into the building, building the building, all the services like the power, the calling, all the IT, it covers absolutely everything. Operations as well is included in it to an extent. Now the people who come on it is basically anybody who's in the data centre industry who wants a good overview of data centres, a good understanding. They want to understand the connectivity, the, all the subsystems and how they interrelate. So type of people, project managers, data centre project managers, IT project managers, architects, building architects, technicians in data centres, operations people in data centres on the facilities side, on the power and the, uh, the calling side, um, financial directors of companies looking for opportunities, how they can follow a better practice than they are at the moment to save money. So it's a very, very wide ranging group, but primarily the people that come on it are the people that work in the data centre who want a holistic kind of view of what goes on. Well, why is it important to know stuff? Uh, people who work in data centres um, are quite critical people. Data centres, the term is mission critical. Um, if you have people working in your data centre who are not sure what they're doing, then they can do a lot of damage. Um, a lot of damage, just disconnecting the, uh, the main incoming fibre leads, for example, by accident because of the lack of knowledge. All sorts of things they can do. So it's really important. These people are very, very important to the critical function of the data centre. So if you don't train them, then you're putting the data centre at risk. And there is also statistics which vary, but... Um, the argument is that around about 60-70% of all failures in data centres are probably human related. The three main reasons for failures in data centres are probably people touching things, power and calling. And people touching things and not knowing what they're touching and not understanding what they're doing is probably the number one cause. What do they expect students when they come on the, uh, the DCDA course? Well, what I actually do, I get a list of all the students, I get their email addresses a week or two weeks before the course. And what I do, I write to them all. And I say to them, welcome, I'm the instructor. Um, you're coming on the course in a couple of weeks time. What do you really want to take away from the course? What are the hot buttons? What are the things that you really want to know to have answered. And I asked them for five, five things. And one thing that always comes out is, what's coming next? What's coming next? What do we need to do to prepare for what's coming next? Because one big problem with the design of data centers is they're designed and they're too rigid. They don't change, they're not flexible. And there's this kind of 14 year cycle towards catastrophe in enterprise data centers. Roughly every seven years you get a major change. And if you haven't prepared for change, once you've done the first change, by the time you've done the second change of 14 years, the data centre is in such a mess and it's so risky, you build a new data centre. Whereas if you can 
kind of plan for change, and instead of doing big steps that cause all sorts of headaches and all sorts of problems and dangers in the data centres, if you can plan for change in little steps, you'll get through the 14-year period, you'll still have a good data centre, and you can jump onto the 21-year period. So this is what they're all really interested in. How can we go through change without destroying our data centre and being prepared for change that comes? So they're all very, very curious about what's coming next. And some of the technologies that are coming next are, for example, OCP, Open Compute Project Technologies, which have been absorbed by the North American banks. Uh, Goldman Sachs today, 80% of all the servers they buy today are OCP servers. Now, the reality is this. When the North American banks take a technology, a few years later, everybody else takes it. It goes all the way back to the IBM mainframe. The North American banks took it first, the British banks next, it rolls across the world. And at the moment, OCP, these vanity-free servers in um, America, currently with the big banks, as an offshoot of the Facebook approach to open up all the hardware specifications, is really big in America and it's starting now in the UK and it's actually rolling into Turkey. In fact, Turkey are more in front on OCP than the British banks. So what's coming next is a real big one. Um, another thing that keeps coming out amongst the um, students is they feel that the previous training courses that they've done are generally by manufacturers. And they feel that they're not really getting um, quality training. They feel that they're getting um, sales training. They feel that at the end of it, the trainer is just taking checks to buy more product from, you know, from that specific manufacturer. What they like about our training is it's vendor independent. No manufacturer buys. So that is really quite special in the industry that it's not manufacturer specific. And they like that a lot. And um, what they like about it is that a manufacturer would kind of create a data center that would be all of his product. But that manufacturer might be only good at the UPS side of the product and not particularly good at the calling side. But all the time he's trying to lock the, the user, the enterprise data center, into a, all of his products. Whereas the best solutions are always, you go and find the best products. So that particular manufacturer might make the best UPS and the best generator, but that might be all. Go and look elsewhere. And the trouble is, when you, you take a single manufacturer, they're now starting to lock you in with this DCIM in software. And it's very similar to what other manufacturers have done on the IT side. You know, the early router manufacturers were, were locking you in with the routing protocols um, and that's dangerous so you want to be as open as possible so you're not tied in to a single manufacturer who in the end basically screws you so that's something they're really interested in on our courses vendor independence there's a lot lot more they're interested in and I could go on for a lot longer um, but there's the, the there's stuff where people over-engineer their data centers. They, they, they totally over-engineer their data centers. Totally unnecessary. Um, and I could go on a lot about that.